In my parents' generation, Chinese people are generally reserved when it came to physical affection. So I don't recall my mom kissing me goodnight or my dad hugging me regularly when I was little. School in my village was not a place to express emotion either. My friends and I wouldn't high five during the team plays. Things started to improve when I left my small village for college in Beijing. My classmates came from all over the country, and some of them are less reserved. In playing game and sports with them, I gradually become a little more touchy and feely. After college, I moved to the United States for grad school. As an international student, I was assigned to a local host family, Hank and Helen McKenney. This picture is me with them. They treated me like their own child, and called me their Chinese son. In this relationship, I experienced the power of human touch as part of American culture. Every time we got together, Hank would always give me a hug. Now Hank is very tall, with a big tummy, and I am small and skinny, as you know. So when Hank gives me his belly first hug, it conveys. Not only friendship, but also comfort and support. I liked that feeling very much, and quickly glued into this hugging habit. Later, I met a girl, and she decided to become my wife. After I hugged her many, many, many times, <laughs> then our song came to the world. And I found touching is one of the few ways I could communicate with him. So I take every opportunity to connect with him physically. I let him sit on me while playing with him. I hold him while reading story to him. I cuddle him to sleep. I kiss him goodbye, and I hug him when I come back home. Over the years, this touchy feely behavior. In our family, has become one of the core family values, and we practice not only during the happy and easy times, but also during the difficult times. For instance, when my wife and I want to stop my son from indulging in something, we would hold him tightly while he cries out of his stubbornness. And when I had an argument with my wife. I would try approaching her and give her a pat instead of walking away. The interactions I had with my family has been transformative. They have taught me more about my value as a father, a husband, and a human being. As I was become more touch and feeling in life. Technologies advanced rapidly, and I am worried. Why? Because in my family, like so many others, technology is getting in the way of physical interactions. We simply cannot take our eyes off our phones or tablets in many occasions, including sitting at the dinner table with our little ones. And our relationship with parents is suffering too. We spend we spend more time checking on them through FaceTime than in person. And we communicate with friends and colleagues often by WeChat or WhatsApp, rather than sitting with them talking face to face. Now this is a dramatic contrast I experienced in my life. Through human touch, taught to me by Hank, I bond very well to those close to me. But with advanced technology, I'm driven apart from them. 
The truth is, technology is making us less human. We are used to think what a device should be like for humans, so it is user-friendly. Have we ever thought about what we look like to a device? Let's figure all this out together by looking at a typical day in our life. After waking up in the morning, the first thing we do is probably using one finger, poking our phone screens, and search for internet, surfing internet for the latest news that interests us. While in the office, most of us get work done in a computer. So we spend most of the day looking at the computer screen while listening to music from the online radio. After work, we start poking our phone again, constantly checking the Facebook feeds or WeChat moment until we go to bed. You see, in all these activities, devices sit only one finger, two eyes, and two ears of us. You don't see any other part of our body at all. So, to a computer or a smartphone, we look like this Tom Eagles cartoon, having a one-finger hand with two ears and one eye. Why only one eye? Because information, including pictures displayed on a screen, has no. It's often in 2D format. Others, not like our 3D physical world, so we don't need to use two eyes to perceive the distance in the third dimension. One is enough. Sadly, Tom Eagle's insight reminds us that technology is not just driving us apart, but also diminishing us. If this is where we are now. Things can get even worse with robots and artificial intelligence coming into our life in the future. The Japanese tech mogul Masayoshi Son predicted, in about 30 years from now, the number of smart smart robots on the earth will be as many as human populations, which will be about 10 billion by 2050. So, where do you think these 10 billion robots will be handing out? Well, some of them will be at the workplace. I think most of them will be living with us in our home. We may have one robot in our office handling the admin tasks, but we will have a few in our home, probably including one at the kitchen preparing food, and one in the living room playing chess with us. Yet one more in our bedroom, reading stories to our kids. With smartphones today, we are already struggling to stay connected with those who are close to us. What will it be like with several intelligent robots around us all the time? I imagine that the time we get to physically connect with people will grow shorter and shorter. But the foundation of human civilization is the physical connections we make with each other. From a warm handshake to a sympathetic, sympathetic hug to a congratulatory pat, we establish complex body languages, emotional expressions, social consciousness, and culture. These are the precious characteristics of human. Which I believe robots and artificial intelligence will never be able to surpass. This picture shows one of the most capable and human-like robots ever created. Her name is Sophia. With her ears made of auditory sensors, she can perceive our voice and analyze our speech. And she can access a vast array of informations on the cloud. With all these functions, Sophia can talk with us on any topics that we may have in mind, including telling a joke to us when she notices that we are bored. But Sophia 
lacks an important function, a sense of touch. That's why during the interview with Jamie Fallon on the Tonight Show, he could not shake her hand. Well, I am a researcher, and my work focuses on developing electronic skins for robots, so they can have a sense of touch like humans. I'm passionate about my work because I value touch, as you already know. So let me tell you what Sophia will be like with a sense of touch. My research team, a Shenzhen University, and colleagues in other institutes around the world. Have already figured out a way to create robotic touch with a sensitivity comparable to that of a human fingertip. So it won't be long before Sophia can not only perceive the strength when shaking people's hands, but also measure the weight, the structure, and the solidity of the object she grabs. In fact. She's going to become so sensitive that she can feel the warmth of human skin and the softness of baby's hair. Besides, engineers are teaching robots to understand human emotions. When our emotions are aroused, there is an increase in the electrical conductance of the skin. Research at Stanford University has shown a robotic touch can detect that change and determine the emotion behind it. Therefore, robots in future will be able to identify the constantly changing emotions of a baby and the needs of the elderly, and act accordingly by providing gentle care to them. When that day comes, will you let a robot to take care of your kids or your parents? Well, I'm not in the position to address this question ethically, but scientifically, this question is about whether or not a human touch can be replaced by robotic touch. As a researcher spending years working on human-robot interface, I don't believe so. Human touch is irreplaceable when it comes to life development, relationship growth, and the need for self-fulfillment of a human being. On the contrary, the robotic touch won't be able to offer the intimacy and empathy that a child needs during critical periods of psychological development. And robotic touch cannot impart the bio. Chemical effect of a hormone to even start a relationship. At the happiest event and the proudest moment, people love to have families and friends around, give them a high five, pat on the back, and warm hugs. I don't believe having robots around will satisfy that feeling of accomplishment. After the life-changing experience in the U.S., I started to hug my parents when I came back home in China. Although it looked awkward at the beginning, we got used to it very quickly. Those hugs. Not only reclaimed a more natural relationship between me and my parents, they also helped create a more touchy-feely culture among three generations in my family. The version of a human in the eyes of smart devices is a sad creature. We should not let our other nine fingers of the hand. And other parts of the body to become redundant. We ought to reach out to show our compassion, support, and willingness to cooperate by becoming more touchy and feely. In welcoming the era of human-robots coexistence, we should establish a right relationship with robots. 
so that we don't lose ourselves as human beings. To do this effectively, we need to wisely choose how we spend our time and energy to give priority to physical connections between humans. To join me, to embrace the power of human touch. Thank you.